It had a round head, very pointed ears. And then you see these great eyes, the great yellow eyes looking at you. I knew for certain it wasn't a domestic. I've never seen anything move so quick in the wild. You could see that it was, you know, a cat-like creature. Britain, home to many myths, legends and superstitions, none more prevalent than the legend of the big cat. But is it simply a legend, or is there something more to it? The Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, Vampires, UFOs, rooted in deep mythology, but is it the same for the legend of the big cat? We will explore the possibilities of the existence of big cats in Britain through scientific evidence and eyewitness accounts. First off, we spoke to Neil Dorman, curator of Twycross Zoo and big cat expert, and asked him about claimed big cat sightings in Britain. A lot of the big cat sightings that are supposedly have been about are going to stem from the releases in the 70s when the Danish Wild Animals Act came in. So it's going to be things like pumas, leopards, tigers, lions, wouldn't have been kept anywhere near in the numbers that that could have been possible with. Things like snow leopards, amor leopards, which would that perfectly to our climate, just wouldn't have been in private collections or in private hands at the time. So that just wouldn't you know, be a case. A common explanation for the existence of big cats in the wilds of Britain is the Dangerous Animals Act of 1976. The problem of keeping exotic or dangerous animals as pets was one that had persisted from Victorian times. As a display of wealth and stature, private menageries were often showpieces for the homes of the rich and famous. However, the keeping of such dangerous animals as leopards proved to be difficult. It is feasible that those who could not handle the upkeep of these demanding animals would either kill them or release them into the wild. The desire to keep exotic pets has led to numerous new breeds of domestic animals such as the Bengal cat, a domestic cat crossed with the leopard cat. Although exotic in appearance, it is purely domestic by nature and poses no threat to its keepers. It is also only slightly larger in appearance than a normal domestic cat, not really easy to mistake from one of its larger cousins. In 1960s Britain, the keeping of exotic pets was again in vogue. An imitation of a big cat would not do, and again, those wealthy enough were freely able to purchase tigers, pumas and leopards. If such an animal were to escape, the safety of the public would be at serious risk. This forced the government to take action and draft the first publication of the Dangerous Wild Animals Act in 1976. The act covers all species of animal deemed dangerous, big cats included. As a result of the publication of the act, anyone keeping a dangerous animal would require a license and veterinarians would be allowed to freely inspect the animal's living conditions. Those who feared that the state of the animal's living conditions were substandard or refused to pay for licenses may have simply killed them or released them into the wild. Of all the dangerous animals kept, big cats are among the most popular. In the year 2000, 169 licenses for big cats were granted, including 10 tigers, 3 pumas, 5 lions and 26 leopards. It would seem the desire to keep such exotic animals is as common today as it ever was. We contacted world-renowned big cat enthusiast Mark Fraser. The size has got nothing to do with it, but it's, it's mainly these bits here. No claws, no symmetry. As long as there have been big cat sightings, there have been big cat enthusiasts. Mark informs us on when big cat sightings began. Well, we've got sightings from the 1500s all the way up, uh, obviously not in great numbers. Sightings did increase from 1976 when the, lows, the, the Wildlife Act came in. They certainly increased. But... Uh, We've got lots and lots of sightings and reports from well before 1976. Sightings have been consistent right up to the present day. Keith Butters contacted us to show us some CCTV footage that he believed to feature a big cat. I was just going out to a school governor's meeting and I'd sat talking to a man on the wall at the top and I just looked across the field and I saw this big black thing. I wasn't really sure what it was. Um, and it's only we got burgled that night, so we managed to look on the CCTV footage, cut burglars, but we also rewound it 
so we could have a look at this, whatever it was on the screen, and it appeared to be some sort of big cat. I'd heard of the cat sightings before and never thought anything of it, and then once I've seen this on the CCTV I'm convinced that there is something there. Not only that, I saw it a couple of days afterwards in the field behind, and that just confirmed to me what it was. And if you just actually look to the right tree on the t TV, um, you'll see the cat suddenly appear and run towards the big silage bales that we have as it leaps over the, the ditch. This provided us with a tantalising glimpse of what could possibly be our first big cat. With rewards on offer, it's no surprise that people attempt to fake images. And it's not as difficult as it sounds. Steve Collingwood, magazine designer, explains the origins of the doctored image. What you took as a photograph, because of the way in which it was developed and used um, in, the, in the production of the newspaper, you couldn't change the image. I mean, it, it was, if a photograph was taken, um, the photograph was then taken to the, the process department at the newspaper, where they would um, uh, create a, uh, an electro plate, and you couldn't do it anything other than use an, uh, an original photograph. In the early days, um, it was very difficult to fake an original photograph, other than what the, the picture you're actually taking. I mean, like, like I, I, could, um, I could put a, a fake beard on, and you could take a picture of me, but what you get is, is the picture of me with the fake beard on. Um, whereas today, of course, you could take a picture of me now and you could put the fake beard on afterwards. Well, you couldn't do that in the early days. Here's a photograph of a big cat captured in the wild. It's a fake. How easy is it to achieve something like this? I don't think you necessarily need um, a, a great deal of skill. Uh, there are very, very um, different ways that you can um, create um, images that give different impressions. Um, there isn't just one way of doing it. Um, because of the software that we've got and the, 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 um, the advances that take place almost daily in the industry that we work, because of that um, there are many different ways that you can create the, the, the image that, that, that you, or, or the, um, the effect that you want to give. And what I would do with that, if I really wanted to use that, I would, um, with the technology that we've got today, I'd make a PDF of it. And that's it. Fake images are one thing, but Mark Fraser explains that the majority of sightings he investigates are cases of mistaken identity. What they don't realise, a lot of these paper reports most probably mistaken identities. The amount of sightings we get, we'd have more big cats in this country than they've got in Africa, if you know what I mean. It's just simply in the case, just simply in the case. And people report, we've got all sorts of strange, you name it, it's been reported. We've got targets, big targets roaming around attacking people. I can't see it, I think, to be honest with you. But it's publicity, and it's not all good. It's no surprise, with Lincolnshire being a mainly rural area, that big cats could exist in the wild with little detection or human contact. This map outlines the hotspots in the Lincolnshire area. But do the people of Lincolnshire think that the big cats are out there? We ask them for their opinions. Uh, I would want proof that they are. I have doubts about that. I don't think there are any big cats roaming around in, in this country at all that we'd know about it. I think so, yeah. Yes, I do. I think it's very possible. I don't have reason to think it, but it's, I, I mean, animals get everywhere, and therefore I think it's possible that a cat is there, probably one that's escaped from somewhere. As news of our investigation spread, more people felt comfortable to talk to us. We went to talk to Margaret Preston and hear her account. I was pretty amazed because I've always been very sceptical about... Uh, the world's panther, uh, but this thing was definitely no dog. Uh, my neighbours that are at the back there don't have dogs. I have often thought before when people have said about it that it could have been something else. It was no animal that I have ever 